Good day, dear listener, and welcome aboard the Ozma. We have an exciting show planned for you. But before we get too far, a word to the wise. Though Project Ozma is considered to be a comedy, the humor involved is known to contain swearing, allusions to sexual themes, as well as themes of minor violence. A more in-depth description of this content as well as the transcript can be found in the description. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy today's episode. I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't the kind of text message I usually get, especially from an old... friend? Look, it's complicated. Like, normally, when normal people want to reach out to you, you get a text that reads like, Can we meet up today? Or, Hey, are you free at 8? Or even, in my personal favorite, Hey, Percy, sorry I dropped off the face of the earth after high school, and I know it's been five years, but gosh golly gee, I'd like to see you again. How does 8 sound? I was willing to accept, with only a bit of kicking and screaming, that is, that college had just separated us. People change, after all. I don't like it, but that's how it is. So when our daily texting turned into weekly, turned into monthly, to not at all, I got the message. She moved on with her life. It was time for me to do the same. But why now? After all those years, why does she suddenly decide that she's going to be here now? It's her. Do I... Do I even answer the door? I've been sitting here on my couch for the last three hours staring at my phone since I got the text, just... just waiting. The waiting is always the worst part, of course, but now I... Can I even face her? After years of not talking to my closest friend, what do I even say? Do I tell her I missed her? Do I punch her in the face for abandoning me? Well, I guess I can't just leave her stranded out there waiting for me. Like how I waited for her. I guess, here goes nothing. Hey, Purse. It's been a while. It was like looking at a photograph. She looked exactly the same. I'm not sure what I expected, but aside from a short haircut, Quinn looked just like the last day I saw her. Uh, Percy? Look, I know this is sudden and overwhelming, but I need to talk to you. It's important. I felt a bitter anger at that. Of course she couldn't just visit me. Why would she? It's not like she was the biggest part of my life and my most favorite person to walk on the planet and I'd assume the feeling was mutual, but no. Of course it's something important. Why you stop the dramatic monologue junior year? Normally helps if someone's there to snap you out of it, but seeing as you've been gone for the last... What was it again? Five years? At least I'm here now. Could you please open the door? What do you want? Percy, aren't you going to let me in? Not until you tell me why you're here. This isn't really the most appropriate place. Oh, so barging into my home would be then? The information I have to share with you is sensitive. I'd rather not discuss it on your front porch. Yeah, I don't think so. Come on, Purse. Is this any way to treat an old friend? Oh, that's what we are? Friends? Gee, I don't remember a card on my birthday at any point during the last five- This is childish. You're childish. (sighs) Honestly. Look, just let me in and we'll- Will what? Pick up like it was old times? Jerry died, Quinn. And you didn't even come to his funeral. That's because Jerry was your evil fish and all you did was flush him down the toilet. You alone could hardly fit in that shitty apartment bathroom, let alone the two of us. You weren't there for me, Quinn. Why should I have anything to do with you now? Percy- I can't give you the answers you want. It's... classified. (laughs) Classified? What kind of garbage are you even- Let me in, Percy. Tell me where you were, Quinn. I went overseas, alright? I studied abroad. For five years? Alright, look. Let me in and I'll tell you everything that I can. How does that sound? Why are you being so secretive? Everything that you can not answer all my questions? That's as much as I can give you, Purse. Great. You're inside, just like you wanted. Now will you please tell me what the hell is going on? Nice to see you again, too. (laughs) Okay. Great talk. Get out of my- In the 50s, the U.S. and the Soviet Union were locked in what would later be known as the Cold War. 
that led to space exploration. Uh, thanks for the history reminder, Captain Nerd, but I don't see Soon, how- both parties were sending satellites into orbit. In May 1961, President John F. Kennedy made a promise to put a man on the moon before the end of the century. Yeah, uh, cool. Is this a weird joke or something? Did you bring Buzz Aldrin carrying the remains of Armstrong? Or is John Glenn waiting in your car for us? Let me finish. In 1969, Kennedy's promise was fulfilled. And we put a man on the moon. No shit. Shut up already. You think you've heard this before, but you haven't. You're missing one very, very important fact. Oh no, I didn't realize I'd have to take a test on the lecture after this. On the moon, Armstrong and his crew met someone. What? Wait, like Russia got there first? I'm pretty sure that would have been mentioned in the old U.S. history class, which I recall getting at least a B. Soviet Union. And no, it wasn't human. <laughs> An alien? <laughs> yeah, so good old Neil met some alien princess and brought her back home and couldn't turn her into Area 51. Is this what you're here to tell me? Percy. Oh, and after he kicked the bucket, she escaped and is trying to get back to her Superman-like fortress on the moon? Armstrong met an alien courier who delivered him an invitation. Quinn? Is this some weird porn plotline you've come up with? What? Absolutely not. Delivered him? Like, <laughs> I didn't think this was a popular thing people enjoyed. But I guess the internet is a strange place I'll never quite understand. Percy, it is not a space porno. I'm telling you actual events that occurred. Then in the past five years, you've been getting high, snorting weed, and it's completely fucked your brain. You don't snort weed, Percy. A stoner would know that. I'm just going to keep talking over your nonsense. You need to hear this. I suppose my opinion really never made a difference anyways. The courier's message contained very vital information. About what? How to make moon meth, which is some weird drug you've got to be on. What is it with you and the drugs today? I don't know, Quinn. This whole situation really screams drug trip to me. Well, it's not. You don't believe me. Don't believe you? Of course I don't believe you. This is absurd. You're trying to tell me that aliens exist and we've known about them since 1969? Oh, and let's not forget you've shown up out of the blue after five years to share all of this with me. Take a wild guess at what's going through my head right now. You need help, Quinn. That's why I'm here, Percy. I need your help. You need more help than what I could ever give you, babe. I know it all sounds crazy. That's the understatement of the year. I know. I know. But you've got to trust me, Purse. I don't gotta do anything. Come on, for old time's sake. All right, you know what? Let's say I do believe you. Just for shits and giggles. What does it even matter? What did the alien courier want? What did he deliver to Armstrong? An invitation. To what? His birthday party? A weekend rager on Mars? A keg party on one of Saturn's moons? The famous Pluto ball? Galaxy-wide peace talks. Oh, Jesus Christ. I know it's a lot. You think? How did this guy even know who they were? Do they just have a random alien stationed on every obscure planet's moons in hopes that they have more, uh, I guess, aliens to them to invite? Apparently. Our radio signals of the attempt reached space. Other planets had intercepted the waves and sent a messenger to await their arrival with a formal invitation. To what purpose? According to the messenger, the code of the galaxy states that once a planet has fully sent themselves into space, the leader of that planet must make an appearance in order to sustain peace in the galaxy. Um, leader of the planet? Last time I checked, we don't have a Supreme Overlord of Earth title. Unless I fucking slept through that part of class. I know the 70s were a blur for a lot of people, but I don't think this is what they meant. No, you're correct. We do not have a supreme overlord of Earth. So, what? Did the Americans just decide to send the current president? Or, like, did all of the UN go? Who did we send? Nobody. What? Nobody? Why? Well, the main reason being that no one really believed Armstrong in the first place. Understandably. The other reason, which was more understandable, was that Earth was worried it might be a trap. And we had just figured out how to get into space... There was no way to know what kind of hostilities we'd encounter. Typical. We get invited to a peace treaty talk and decide we need to bring guns. Did they try to send a cross and Bible too? Percy, that's not the point. They didn't send anyone to this meeting. Wow. That's pretty rude. Not even a, we're worried this is not in our best interest letter to that courier or whatever. Or even on a Mars exploration? We just left them hanging? Well, at the time, it was so expensive, we weren't going to be a messenger pigeon. So we just ignored it then. 
but that doesn't... Not a lot of people believed Armstrong in the first place, and after a couple decades, not many at NASA knew anymore. The newer staff replaced the older, and the older ones eventually passed away. So basically no one did anything? Correct. Okay, so what's the point of you telling me all this? Turns out, there's consequences for not showing up to these talks for well over 50 years. Such as? If we don't send our Supreme Overlord to the peace talks by the end of the week, Earth will be deemed unfit for independent rule. We will be attacked and invaded and placed under the rule of a more experienced planet. That's bad. That's very bad. So then, who are we going to send? Well, that leads me to the reason I'm here. Uh, what? I need you to come with me into space and pose as the Queen of Earth. Get out. Percy- No, I've listened to your psycho ramblings like you asked, and now I'm asking you to leave. Percy, I'm not lying to you. <laughs> you know what? I could wrap my head around the whole aliens are real idea and was almost ready to accept it. But this? <laughs> you are absolutely fucking nuts. I promise you, I'm telling you the truth. Maybe you think you're telling me what you believe is the truth, but buddy, you are absolutely insane. Percy, I... I can't prove it to you. You have every right to not believe me. But if you don't come now, know that people are going to die. Earth will be attacked, and you will know that you had a chance to save it, but you did nothing. Well, remember what I said before? What's that? Get. Out. Persephone! No, I'm over it. Get off my property, Quinn. Percy, you don't understand. I don't really care! You up and left for five years and come back and feed me this bullshit story about aliens and royalty and some goddamn space conspiracy, and I really don't give a flying fuck. I don't want you in my house. Leave. Percy, I need you to come with me on this trip, whether you like it or not. Oh yeah? Well, your crazy ass is gonna have to make me. I will, Percy. Don't make me make you. You and what army? Where do you think I was gaining all of this knowledge for five years that the government clearly kept secret from the public? Do you really think I would come here to collect you alone? As a matter of fact, I do. The Quinn I know would know that I don't like group pressure and would have fought even harder. Fine. You called my bluff, but I'm still making you come with me. Oh, and how's that? We can do this the easy way or the hard way. You don't need your shoulder moving to walk to my car. Are you fucking kidding me? Where the hell did you get a gun? What the fuck is going on? You're coming with me to space. Get what you need and then get in my car. Jesus Christ, all right. Put that thing down before you hurt someone. I couldn't even believe this. My best friend shows up, feeds me a ridiculous story about space, then threatens to shoot me if I don't come with her. I felt powerless and angry. So I stubbornly scooped up the essentials and followed her out to her car. Why are you doing this? I had hoped it wouldn't come to this, but time is a luxury I do not have. Who are you? Someone who has the power to make your life a living hell if you don't get moving. After you. I take back my previous statement. You aren't just fucking nuts, you're a fucking psychopath. Just get in the damn car. I'm going, damn, don't shoot me for tripping over my fear of death. Percy. I'm getting in. It's going to be a long ride. Get comfy. What happened to you, Quinn? Who's making you do all this? I need your help, Percy. Whether you want to or not, the state of the entire planet may rest on your shoulders.
Project Ozma is a Goose Thunder Network produced podcast. Today's episode, Old Friends, was written by Molly Ray and Megan and edited by Ilva with sound editing by Sunny. Music was composed and performed by Benny James. The voices you heard in today's episode in order of appearance were Allison as Percy and Petra as Quinn. Want to continue to stay up to date on all things Ozma? Follow us on Tumblr at Project Ozma on Instagram at Project Ozma Podcast, or on Twitter at Project Ozma.